Hi there. Today we're going to learn how to sew this simple but classy V yoke corset dress which has no bones nor bra calves. Very easy and beginner friendly. If this is something you'd love to learn, do stick and stay and let's do this together. <music> From our model's shoulder to the top of the breast where the dress is to start is six and a half inches and the shoulder to the nipple is 12 inches shoulder to waist is 18 inches and shoulder to the underbars is 16 and so we'll mark them all accordingly From her shoulder to the hip is 26 and so we'll add that to it. This is the nipple, underbust, waist and hip lines. The nipple to nipple measurement is 8 inches and so we'll mark half of it which is 4. We'll take the same measurement to the hip and draw a line to connect the two points. At the underbars, we'll take one inch from both sides and we'll do the same for the waist. And draw a line to connect these two and also joining it to the hip. We connect the underbust to the nipple, but then doing so in a curve. Unfortunately, the video paused along the way. This is what I added. We measured one and a half inches from the nipple point upwards. And this is because her bust is 42. If it's for a client whose bust is 39, 38, 37 and below, we may do just about one inch. After we have marked that, we also will draw a line from the nipple point to touch that one and half that we marked. And then we square it off. So that's how come we got this additional line and this line. We will add half of an inch to whatever we had as our nipple to nipple measurement at the top here. And so this was four inches. When we come to the top here, we'll add half to it to give us four and half. Then to get two inches that on top here, we would move one inch to the left side and one inch to the right side. And connect these two points to the one and half mark that we marked here. Then, we would measure from the underbars point all along this curve till we get to the top here and then compare the same with this wherever you got for this and then you reach that for the second part you truncate it or you cut it off and so measuring this i get nine and three quarters and so i would measure nine and three quarters on this On this line, I'm going to divide the bust measurement into four and add one inch seam allowance to it. The bust divided by four gives us ten and a half plus one inch. We move to the waistline. The waist measurement is 35 inches. We will subtract two inches from it before we divide it by four. And so two minus 35 is giving us 33 inches. 33 inches divided by 4 will give us 8 and a quarter plus our 2 inches dart allowance and then our 1 inch seam allowance. We draw an S like shape to connect this point here to our bust divided by 4. From the center point and on the nipple line, we move upwards by two and a half inches. And then we open our cleavage 
by half of an inch. This is because we want one inch interval in between the breasts. Then we draw a curve to connect this second dot to the point we just marked. From this point, we draw an arc to connect to this very dot. The same thing on the nipple line, we mark our nipple to nipple, which was 4 inches, starting from here to the other side. And we'd as well draw a line to connect this second dot to that point, and it would extend all the way till it touches our S shape. We draw a line to connect the two side seams, that is from the top here to the waist. We divide our hip measurement into four, and then we add the same seam allowance we added to this part. And so our hip is 49, divided by four gives us 12 and quarter, plus one inch seam allowance. Then we connect our side seam to this very point. We move downwards by three inches on the side seam. Then we take off one inch seam allowance from this very side. Now we'll go ahead and cut our hip line and then fold this dot onto this so that we'll be able to connect our one inch seam allowance all the way to the center front here. Bear in mind we are not making any deduction. Then, to ensure that there is no space at the center front of our client, we will move towards this direction by half of an inch and this side by half of an inch. Then we refine our dot again. Then we draw a line to connect this to our waistline. And we fold on our new darts. Now we can refine our curve. We'll go ahead and cut this. Now we're going to trace, we're going to trace our chest line and then our waistline to get our back pattern. And then we'll do the same for our hip line and what we just did for the side here. We are tracing them all to get our back pattern. On our chest line, we're dividing our bust into four and then adding one inch seam allowance as we did for the front. On our waistline, we are subtracting two inches from our waist measurement, dividing it by four, adding one and a half dart allowance and one inch seam allowance. We are adding one and a half dart instead of the two inches we added on the front pattern. And so the waist minus Two inches gives us 33, divided by four would give us eight and quarter, plus our one and a half dart allowance, and then our one inch seam allowance. On the hip line, we are dividing our hip measurement into four, plus our one inch seam allowance. And so the hip is 49 divided by 4 gives us 12 and quarter plus 1 inch seam allowance. Then we connect these three points. On the chest line, we are going to 
mark the same nipple to nipple that we had marked on the front bodice, but then adding quarter of an inch to it. The nipple to nipple was 8, divided by 2 gives us 4 inches, plus quarter, which gives us 4 and quarter. We'll mark it on the chest line and we'll mark same on the hip line and draw a line to connect the two points. We'll take off three quarters on both sides of our waistline. This is because we added one and a half inches dart allowance to the back pattern. Then we draw lines to connect this point to the top and to the hip line and we'll do the same for the other side. On the hip line, we are going to cut this and then we'll fold this dart onto the other. Then on the three inches line that we marked from the front to the back, we'll take off our seam allowance, which is one inch. Then we draw a line to connect this very point to the center back. From the chest line, I'll move downwards by one, and then I'll do the same for this side, so that I draw a line from the top here to connect these two points I'm talking about. Then we'll go ahead and label. This is our center front. This is C1, C2, S1, S2, this is side, and this is our center back, and then our side back. And so this is what we are going to have, the front and the back. We have folded C1 and then S1 together so that the two becomes one piece. So we would be able to have three pieces for each of the brazier cups. With this, we will go ahead and then use this to cut our fabric. This is how I added the seam allowances. For the CF, this very part was unfold and then the other part we added our seam allowance to it but this is what i did instead of making the fabric instead of making the fabric's length up to the top here i reduced it by about a quarter of an inch and rather folded it backwards and so it's just like finishing the top here that's how come i flipped it backwards and so it's not up to this full length it has been reduced by a quarter of an inch and the rest has been folded like this. When it comes to C1 and then S1, it has been put together, used to cut our fashion fabric itself. An allowance has been added on the side, down here and the other side. On the top, there was no allowance added. When it comes to C2 and S2, allowance has been added all around. When it comes to the side, that is the front side, allowance is added to this part and this part. When it comes to the top, the side and down here, there are no allowances added. But then I've also cut a facing for it, which would be used to face just the top here up to somewhere around this portion. This is because the fabric is a crepe fabric and then we don't want to line it fully. We're just lining just the top part. When it comes to the back pattern, the side back has allowance added at this very side and nowhere else and also the center back has 
allow us on this side to and nowhere else but when it comes to the top of both it has also been reduced by a quarter of an inch where i have flipped it backwards and so it looks as though it has been sewn that is quarter of an inch has been sewn to finish the edge here but in reality it has been folded backwards like this and so this is going to serve as the facing that is for both the side back and the center back patterns that's how i did them when it comes to the caps itself i've wanted to make it a bit heavier as such i've used this warden this is very very hard the extra hard warden type i have cut the warden into the same shape as c1 s1 c2 s2 just as you see here when it comes to c1 s1 c2 s2 this is what i did i have cut four different layers of the fashion fabric which i'm going to use as the fashion fabric itself and its lining when it comes to the others they've all been cut just one layer and so this is two pieces this is one full piece which will be opened these are individual two pieces there are no linings for them it's only the brazier cup that has lining and so i've cut four pieces of each of them with the interfacing this interfacing is not something we are going to fuse to the cups instead we are going to just stitch them inward we are stitching c2 and s2 we pick one layer at a time and we'll go ahead and stitch this we'll do same for the other We are going to pick one of C2 and then we'll put the warden on it like this. And we'll repeat same for the other one. Then we'll go ahead and stitch these two sides together. So we're going to stitch this part. And we'll repeat same for the other one. We are first going to stitch S2 and then C2 together. What I've done is that I have sewn the, the fabric with the interface, that is the warden, together. And so we're just going to put the two together like this and then run stitches on them. After we're done with this neatly, we'll go ahead and fix C1S1. This is it. And this is where the C1 is and this is where the S1 is. And so we just match it accordingly. We're going to do the same for the lining too. Okay, so after stitching all this, what you do is that you put the two good sides together. That is one lining and then one fashion fabric. You put them together like this and then we we'll stitch just the top. We are stitching just the top.
We are going to top stitch. After top stitching, we are flipping the whole thing to the wrong side or the inside. The next step would be to stitch the two together so that we secure the rough edges. After securing this, we'll put this aside and then join the bodice itself. And so we take CF and then the front side. We are going to stitch them together. We will top stitch this. Then I'll stitch the facing for the side front. That is just the top here. And we'll do the same for the other part as well. And so this is it after we've ironed it to the wrong side. Right. So we see how the center front is. There is some excess here which we are going to flip to the back at the end of the day. But before then, we would first have to fix our cups. And so this is going to be the center front. This is going to be the C1 and then C2. We'll fix it close to the center of our dress. So we're going to fix this here and then we'll fix the other one on the other side as well. This is what we are doing. We are matching the middle piece to the dot line here. And then we're going to stitch it all the way till we get to the top before we are to flip the excess or the lining. Right, so we are leaving this and then we'll stitch the other side as well. Also making sure that we stitch till we get to where we've added our facing. So we are starting from here all the way to the down part. Right, and so it is beautifully sewn in place. We'll go and do the same for the other side. After inserting the cups, this is how we finish the linings. We'll first flip this to the right side, as you see here, and then we'll pull this backwards, like this. And so we'll go ahead and stitch where we have stitched at first. Right, so this is what we have and that finishes this top for us very neatly after this we'll go and run overlap stitches on both cups and then we'll come back to continue after running the overlock stitches on the cup mm -hmm. we'll fold this other lining this way we'll fold this side too
making sure that the fold will be on our seal line because we are going to top stitch it. Now, before we top stitch this, we also would have to finish this side. And so we would also bring this backwards and then we stitch. Then we flip this to the good side and it finishes the edge for us very neatly. We repeat same for the other side. After this, we're going to top stitch. Also, I'm top stitching the top here. This is beautifully stitched. For the back, we are going to join the side back and the center back together. We are going to flip this to finish the back neckline. Right. We'll go and run overlock stitches on this. We repeat same for the other side and then we'll come back to continue. What we're doing next will be to take the front part and then put the back on the side. Like this. I've opened the facing for the back so that to be able to fix it on like this. So as it starts now, we are going to stitch our 1 inch seam allowance which we have added on. You see that the back exceeds the front. That is by the facing that we have attached on. And so we are going to stitch this. Because the fabric stretches, I am taking 1 and half inch seam allowance instead of the 1 inch seam allowance we had added on originally. We flip this to the back and then we stitch. Making sure that it lies on it exactly the same. We'll pin this, turn it to the other side and do the stitching. Now we can flip it to the good side. And then we have our back neckline neatly finished. We'll go ahead and repeat the same for the other side. After stitching our side seams, what you're going to do next would be to cut the down part. The skirt part of our dress has been cut into a length of 14 inches and also a width of 180 inches which is about five years and so i have also knitted one side of it and the other side is unfinished what you are going to do is that you are going to hem this part which is unfinished you can run overlock stitches and then top stitch just once but then with the help of a narrow hem foot i'll use this to hem 
the part that has not been finished. Right after this is done, you can run loose stitches on this other side which we knitted, and then you gather. But with the help of a ruffler foot, I'd want to use the ruffler foot instead to get the gathering. We'll go ahead. And insert this into the ruffler foot and then stitch. And so this is how neat our ruffler foot has gathered our skirts and so we'll go ahead and fix this onto the dress we'll mark the midpoint and then we'll match the midpoint to the center front of our dress We we'll leave this to the top and then we we'll stitch it throughout till we get to the center back and repeat the same for the other side as well. Right, and so we'll go ahead and stitch all along. After stitching our skirt onto the bodice, what you are going to do next would be to seal our center back. But before that, we would have to run overlock stitches to finish the rough edges. So we're going ahead to stitch from the base all the way to this very point and that's where our zipper will start from. I will also go ahead and then stitch our zipper in place.